Hello folks, this is Aitman Ajha from InspireToRise.com and today we are going to talk about the Radeon RX 5500 XT. So guys, let's first start with the unboxing for the Radeon RX 5500 XT. This is the latest GPU from AMD and the version that we have is the Gigabyte Gaming OC 8G version. And this particular version comes with a wind force design which means better cooling and I found that the acoustic performance of the card was also pretty good and it wasn't noisy at all. Inside the box the first thing that you'll find is the quick start guide for this one. There is no CD driver this time around and I personally appreciate this because we don't need CD drives in 2019 anymore. Inside you get the card. This card would be available in 4GB and 8GB VRAM versions and this one is the triple fan model. One thing that I particularly like about this card is that it's got a very beefy cooling. At the back you get three display port ports and one HDMI 2.0B port. Apart from that I felt that the build and design is solid like almost every other Gigabyte card and it also supports RGB Fusion 2.0 and this card comes with an 8 pin power connector and has a 150 watt TDP. Overall dimensions of this this card are also big enough and it's a ATX form factor card. The backplate is pretty good and it's reinforced. This card has PCI Express 4 support for twice the bandwidth of PCI Express 3. It comes with 1408 stream processors and apart from that has a 14,000 MHz memory clock based on 7 nanometer process, has 8 GB GDDR6. 128-bit memory interface. The memory bandwidth is 224 Gbps and it comes with a base clock of 1685 MHz which is higher than the normal base clock for the OEM card and the boost clock goes up to 1845 MHz. Our location sponsor for today is MakeMyRig.com. Do check them out for custom PCs. Our build for today had an Intel Core i5-8400 6-core 6-thread, 32GB of dual-channel RAM, a Corsair VS550 power supply. Everything else was kept in the winter of New Delhi, which means that it was properly air-cooled. A 450W PSU is the minimum recommended for this one. We use something with extra headroom for overclocking and few other things. And now let's talk about the gaming performance for this card. We played a lot of games on this one, Counter-Strike Global Offensive and games like PUBG, Fortnite and a lot of other games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Grand Theft Auto 5, Far Cry New Dawn and we came across some conclusions which we will share with you in this video. So the first thing that I would like to say is that something like Red Dead Redemption 2 wouldn't be playable on 1080p in high settings. You can play it on 1080p lower, 1080p medium settings and sometimes while playing games, bad stuff does happen with people. A few moments later, I went back to settle the score but So the one thing that I observed from all of this is that the RX 5500 XT is a capable 1080p gaming card. The 1650 Super is slightly slower than this card. I found that the difference was around 1920 but the 1650 Super is definitely cheaper than this one and it would be a slightly better pick in most of the markets. The 1660 Super is 15 to 20 percent faster than the RX 5500 XT and all of the frame rates for the different games with the average FPS is just in front of you and you can see how capable this card is for almost all of the games for 1080p extreme settings and I found that only very heavy games like RDR2 required lowering down the settings. All of the benchmark scores and everything else indicates that it's around 4 to 6 percent faster than the 1650 Super. The MSRP for this card for the 4GB version would be around $170 and it would be around $200 for the 8GB version. I feel that for such a price, it's quite underwhelming and the kind of performance that I expected from this card was nowhere to be seen. The Radeon software NNLN 2020 edition does come up with a lot of new features which make gaming a little bit more fun. I found that there are better streaming controls, better OC controls built right into the software, something called as Radeon Boost which will definitely change the way we play our games and a lot of other newbie friendly stuff. Now finally if I talk about whether this GPU is worth buying or not, I believe that for this price you might consider investing a little bit more and going for the 1660 Super or if you really want to save your money you can even go with the 1650 Super and still enjoy 1080p gaming nicely. So guys this was it for this video. In case you like this video, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and do subscribe to Inspire to Rise for more awesome tech videos like this one. And guys, no matter what you do, stay inspired to rise.